Okay, so we're gonna focus on now building something, uh, building the unit circle, and what, you'll see what I mean by that. But um, we're gonna use the unit circle um, to evaluate or remember a bunch of trigonometric ratios, basically. So um, the unit circle, first of all, we wanna sing, uh, focus on the idea that this word is singular. So when we say the unit circle, again, we're saying that the length of the radius of this circle has length one. It's one unit long. So it's not plural. It's not the unit circle. It's the unit circle. So um, I think people skip over that and it clears up some stuff why it's so important. So the unit circle means circle with length of radius one unit. Uh, we're going to put angles all over this circle. Okay, we'll draw one here, <clears throat> one here. So that'll be this green angle. We'll draw another blue angle, right? So there'll be many central angles that we're gonna draw on this thing. And when we draw these angles, the first, they're always gonna start with the first initial side of the angle or the initial ray, starting with an endpoint at the center and going out along the x-axis in the positive direction. That's the initial side of an angle in standard position. <clears throat> when we take the other side and we start to rotate, wherever we stop, we're calling that the terminal side of an angle in standard position on the unit circle, okay? So it's a unit circle. The angles were always gonna start on the x-axis there. The radius of the circle is always one. Uh, the unit circle has its center at the origin zero, zero. All right, so we already did a lot about this last class. There's two ways now that we can measure angles. Degrees measure the central angle formed uh, by the initial term size by measured by a protractor, it's looking at the amount of rotation and we use a protractor. We can also measure that angle in radians and it's the ratio, remember that fraction of the arc length to the radius, meaning how many radii fit over the, or stretch over the arc length if we lay them down along the outside of the circle. Since the radius of the unit circle is one, the radian measure is just going to be the distance traveled around the circle. So since we know that that's going to be one, our radian's going to also, our angle, in this case for the unit circle only, the measure of our angle is also going to be able to be equal to the length of the arc because the radius is one, okay? Um, but uh, that's not super important for right now. Uh, we are going to want to get back to our, um, radians and degrees in a minute. The first four points that are very important on the unit circle, you need to know the coordinates of these four points. And they're easy because the, the radius of the unit circle is length one. So the coordinates of that point are clearly one, zero. This has a radius of one going in that direction. So the coordinates of that point are zero, one. This one's going to be negative one, zero. And this one is going to be zero, negative one. All right, so those are the points that are on all the, the different parts of the axes in the circle. We need to start by knowing those points. If we talk about the angles, by the way, I'll draw them in orange. This angle here, the initial side starts in standard position, the terminal side stops there. That's gonna be a 90 degree angle or pi over two. Uh, this angle, if I draw it in blue, and I'm gonna come right back on top of itself, that angle is zero, and it's gonna be zero in degrees or in radians, because we're not rotating at all. So the blue angle is zero degrees, the orange angle is 90 degrees, or pi over two in radians, and so on and so forth. We're not gonna go over all of these. Okay, we're going to do it in a little bit. Okay, so next up uh, is our 45, we're gonna use the unit circle in conjunction with our special right triangles. So if you remember uh, from geometry, we had our 45, 45, 90 triangles. And what we knew was like, if this side I'll say is B, I like using B here. The other side is B, they have to be equal because it's an isosceles triangle. I know that because these two angles are congruent. Those are the base angles. The sides opposite the base angles are the um, legs of the right triangle and they're congruent. So we know that two sides are the same, we'll call them B and B, and then the hypotenuse is gonna be B times root two. So if you recall that from geometry, that's a special right triangle of 45, 45, 90. 
If I draw a 45 degree angle on the unit circle, I'll show you it over here. If I go up to when I hit the circle for a 45 degree angle, drop down that side, I create this 45, 45, 90 right triangle. And one of the sides I know for sure, I know that that side is one. So if we come over here, um, we're gonna kind of pull that triangle out of the unit circle. And we know that that's 45 degrees because of uh, the central angle here. And then we know by triangle sum that the other one's 45 because they have to all add up to 180. We know that this side in the unit circle, the hypotenuse will be one. We can find the other two sides then. So if you recall from here, um, from doing this in geometry, there's a bunch of different ways to look at it. I like saying I make a little comparison. Those two things have to be equal and I can solve for B. I can make an equation. B root two is equal to one in our specific triangle. So if I solve for B, I divide both sides by root two and I get B equals one over root two. And of course we don't like square roots in the denominator. So we're gonna rationalize by multiplying the top and the bottom by the square root of two. Sorry, I didn't mean to move the screen like that. So on the top, one times root two is root two. And on the bottom, root two times root two is root four, which is really two. So B is root two over two. And so now we know what these are equal to because they were equal to B. So if you recall from geometry, and again, this is the kind of thing, if you don't remember this stuff, ask me in class about it. I'm more than happy to kind of try to get you to understand it. We can also do some extra help uh, scheduling um, if you need more time. So we're going to really remember this special right triangle. And we're really going to remember the sides that are involved, square root of 2 over 2 and 1. And we want to put those in order. Which number is bigger than the other? Well, first of all, to compare two numbers, if one's a fraction, we've got to make the other one a fraction with the same denominator, and it's easier to compare them. So if I change 1 into 2 over 2, now I can compare these. Since the denominators match, I can just compare the numerators. Which number's bigger, 2 or the square root of 2? Two is definitely bigger, so we know that square root of two over two is less than one. We're gonna use that information a little bit later, okay? So we wanna remember that number. This is gonna be a very special number that's gonna come up a lot here in the unit circle. Um, so uh, on this guy, for the 45 degree angle, we know these two sides to be square root of 2 over square root of 2, square root of 2 over square root of 2. I'm sorry, square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2. And we know this hypotenuse to be 1. So for a, on the unit circle, if we move to a 45 degree angle, we know that these distances here, what they are. Now, if I think of this without the triangle now, this is a little weird here, um, but watch this. Uh, I want black actually. Okay. If I think of this outside of the triangle, that was too big. Let's try like this. So I'm going to kind of not think of it as a triangle now. Yes, I used the triangle to find those side lengths, but now if I ignore the triangle and I sort of ignore the circle, so it has nothing to do with the circle and nothing to do with the triangles, we use those two facts to come out, come up with these sides that we came up with. Right? The fact that it was the unit circle, we knew the hypotenuse is 1. The fact that it's a 45, 45, 90 triangle, that got us these lengths. But now if we just think of it as a regular coordinates of points, if I know these two distances, I know the coordinates of that point are that. That's the coordinates of this point right there. So finding the lengths of the sides of the right triangle, you're really finding the x value and the y value of a point, the x coordinate and the y coordinate. And that's gonna be kind of the big idea here. We're gonna use that a lot. So once we find those side lengths, we, we did that through unit circle and right triangle stuff. But once we find those, then we're kind of done with that part. And now when we write the coordinates, we're just looking strictly at, we went over this amount and up that amount. So that must be the coordinates of that point. Sine, cosine, and tangent of 45, we're going to come back to that at the start of class. We're going to do that together in class. 
The same thing is going to happen here with a 30-60-90 triangle. So if you recall your 30-60-90 triangles, the basic one, I'll call it my formula one, is the short leg, if we called that B, then the hypotenuse is going to be double that, and the long leg is going to be three uh, root three times that. So that's sort of like our little formula here. If I look at a 30-60-90 triangle and draw it in the unit circle, I'll do that up here, uh, and I'll just draw my own. Here's my unit circle. If I look at the 30-60-90 triangle and I draw it like this where this angle is 60 and this angle is 30, one of the sides I know already because it's inside the unit circle. I know this side is 1 because it's a radius of the circle. Right? It has nothing to do with the triangle. It's just that I have a circle and I know the radius of this circle is 1 because it's called the unit circle. So on my picture here, if that's the 60, that's the 30. So in the unit circle, this side is 1. I want to find out what the other two sides are. So again, I did this in geometry by taking the formula 1, like the formula triangle over here, and saying it's equal to the side I know. So I have 2B equals 1, and I can solve for B. I divide both sides by 2, and I get B equals 1 half. So if B equals 1 half, then I know this side here is 1 half. And once I have B, uh, I know this side, I can plug in 1 half. I got 1 half times root 3. That's really going to be like over 1. That's going to be root 3 over 2. So now I know the three sides of the right triangle here. I know that this side is 1 half, and I know that this side is root 3 over 2. Now before we move on, these are two other very important numbers, root 3 over 2 and 1 over 2. And again, the 1. These numbers are going to come up over and over again combined with the root 2 over 2. And we want to compare them. So we've got these numbers. We've got the number 1, we've got the number root 3 over 2, uh, 1 over 2, and root 2 over 2. We want to find out which one's the biggest, which one's the smallest, that's going to be really, really important for us moving forward to understand what's happening. And again, I'm trying to preach understanding, not memorization. So to compare these four numbers, I'm going to have to call 1, 2 over 2. I can think of 1 as 2 over 2. Shouldn't be much of a stretch. This way, all four of my numbers have the same denominator. So now if I want to put them in order, I just have to order the numerators. What I can do is I can, um, you can compare them without doing this, but it makes it even a little easier. I'm going to rewrite this number again. I want to call it the square root of something over 2. So I can call it the square root of 4 because 2 is the same thing as square root of 4, right? So now I've got the square root of 4 over 2. That's really the same thing as 1, right? That connects all the way back to 1 because the square root of 4 is 2 and 2 over 2 is 1. So if you think of 1 as the square root of 4 over 2, that might help in this. Then I've got my square root of 3 over 2 is the square root of 3 over 2. Then I've got my 1 half. Uh, if I want to write that as a square root, I can write it as the square root of 1 over 2. Because what's the square root of 1? 1. So if I think of 1 half as the square root of 1 over 2, and I think of 1 as the square root of 4 over 2, then I have my final root 2 over 2. Sorry, I squished myself up against the thing here. So let's write those numbers again. Square root of 4 over 2, which we know is really 1. Square root of 3 over 2, which we know is square root of 3 over 2. Square root of 1 over 2, which we know is really 1 half. And square root of 2 over 2. Now it's much easier to put these in order. The denominators match, and all the numerators are in square root form, so I can switch them around. So the order from largest to smallest, and this is going to be important, four, square root of 4 over 2, then square root of 3 over 2. So that's going to be larger than that is going to be larger than the square root of 2 over 2. Oh, I keep squishing myself here. Sorry. And then that's going to be bigger than the square root of 1 over 2. Remember, this is really 1. And this one's really 1 half. You need to remember this. I tried to show you how I think about it. If you want to remember it for a different reason or in a different way, be my guest. These numbers are going to come up again and again and again. And actually, I should add in 0 as well is going to come up. And 0 is obviously the smallest one. 
So this would be from largest to smallest. Of course, I could rev reverse the list to go from smallest to largest. You need to remember those numbers and you need to know them in order, which one's larger than the other. You need to be able to think through it. All right, so if I put these on the 30, 60, 90 triangle, if I look at a central angle of 30 degrees, then that means it's a 30, 60 triangle where 30 is down there. So uh, I know this side is one because the unit circle is one. And then based on what I found out before, these numbers here, I've got, I know that it's gonna be one half in root three over two. Where did I do that? Up here. For the 30, 60, 90, it's gonna be one half and root three over two are gonna be the legs. Which one is which? Well, this is why I made you memorize the order. The 30 degree angle is smaller than the 60 degree angle. So the side opposite 30 is gonna be smaller than the side opposite 60. So if my two legs are root three over two and one over two, you need to know which one is smaller. So which of these numbers is smaller? Again, I think of one over two as root one over two. Then it's obvious. If I compare these two numbers, one half is the smaller number. So that's the smaller side. 60 is bigger than 30, so the side across from 60 will be bigger than, that, than the side across from 30. So that'll be our bigger one, root three over two. And of course, the side across from 90, since 90 is the biggest angle, will be the biggest side, and we know that one is bigger than all of them. That's how I can remember what side length goes where. Now, if I want to write the coordinates of this point, now it has nothing to do with the triangles or the circle. Please remember that it just refers to the x coordinate is this length, and it's going to be root 3 over 2. I know that because it's across from the bigger angle. The other y coordinate will be this purple side here, and I know that that's the smaller of the two sides because it's across from the smaller angle 30, so I know that that side will be 1 half. Um, we're going to get back to these later in class. Here's the other 30, 60, 90 that will come up in the unit circle. What if the central angle is 60 instead of 30? We're just sort of flipping this triangle around. We know that side to be 1, and then the two other legs, um, we know the smaller leg is across from the smaller angle. We know the smaller leg is across from the smaller angle. So I know that um, the smaller side is across from the smaller angle. So again, when I compare the two numbers for 30, 60, 90, I know it's going to be one of these two choices. I know 1 half is the smaller side, so that's going to be across from 30. And then I know root 3 over 2 is the bigger side, so that's going to be across from the 60. Now if I write out my coordinates for the 60 degree angle, I know the x coordinate will be the smaller value and the y coordinate will be the bigger value. We're going to get back to these a little bit later in class. We'll get back to this part as well. We're going to do that together in class. Um, this is going to be an important feature as we move forward. You, you've learned this already in algebra. So I'm not going to talk a lot about it other than to say the sine ratio of an angle. We should, really should have thetas in here. The sine of theta is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse, I'm just going to abbreviate because I'm not going to rewrite them here. Cosine of theta is going to be equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. And tangent of theta is going to be equal to the opposite over the adjacent side of the triangle. That's going to help us figure out some of these values, but we've sort of already done that. So it's just something that we're going to use in some other areas in class. Um, I would like for us to do these last two guys here on the video and then we're good to go so if our angle is 330 degrees that means we rotate around that much all the way to 330 um, so how do we figure out the side lengths here well again because it's a unit circle we know that's one so what's this angle well we know there's 360 degrees in a circle so if we rotated the green amount 330 we know there's only 30 left. And if that's 30 and it's a right triangle, that's got to be 60. So again, we have our 30, 60, 90 triangle. So we know the two sides here, the two legs, are going to be 1 half and root 3 over 2. Which one's which? Well, you have to know which number is bigger or smaller. So 1 half is the smaller number, and 30 is the smaller angle. So 1 half is going to go here. And then so that means root 3 over 2 is the bigger one. It's going to go there. So if we want to write those coordinates in, 
the coordinates are gonna be root three over two and negative one half. Why did I put in the negative? Because the point is down here in quadrant four. So I go positive on the x-axis, but I go negative to get to that coordinate on the y-axis. All right, let's look at this guy. If the angle is 135, then what's the angle inside the triangle? How many degrees do we have left? We know that that's gonna be 45 because we know half a circle is 180. So if that's 45, then this one's 45. We have a 45, 45, 90 triangle. We know the hypotenuse is one because it's a radius of the circle. In the 45, 45, 90 triangle, we know the side lengths of the legs are root two over two and root two over two. Um, Apple pencil, okay, great, thank you. Um, root two over two and root two over two. They're the same because it's an isosceles right triangle, so that's nice here. I don't have to decide which one goes where, they're both the same. We do have to consider the sine value, like is it positive or is it negative? So to go in this direction on the x-axis, we go negative, so the x is negative root two over two. Then to get to the y value, we go up, so it's positive root two over two. Um, again, if this is confusing, it'll become a little more clear because we're gonna do about a thousand of these in class. So you'll get the hang of it. That's my introduction to this. Thanks for watching.